Yay! Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another episode of Vulnerability Time. I am your host and published author, Josias Abril. With us today, we have Sarah. Um, Sarah, before we get to know you a little bit, I have a question I've been dying to ask you. So you said you had went to a conference, right? Yeah. How was that? Uh, it's so amazing. So um, for the past three days, I was in Orlando, Florida for the oh. Every Nation campus um, conference, student conference. So this is a conference that the organization that I work for, um, we do yearly. And so we took a, gr a group of students from Houston and met in Orlando and we had 2000 plus students all together. Wow. Um, and it was just an amazing time. Um, conference is always, it's always such, such a good time for me. Mm -hmm. um, I think this one uh, specifically was like my favorite so far. Like it, it was so right. fun. So fun, so good. The speakers are amazing, and it really, um, for me, it it just reminded me. It kind of reignited a passion for why I chose to do campus ministry, oh. um, you know, for the time being with my life, and why it, it's so important to reach young people and students because of the things that were happening there, the testimonies that came out of it. Um, oh. I mean, people's lives are literally changed. My life was changed by going to these conferences and being part of the student ministry. So it was a great time and I could talk more about it, but yeah, it was great. <laughs> Sarah, what is, um, you said there were great speakers. What is something that really stood out to you about the speakers or about yeah. something that they said, regardless of who it was? Yeah, I I just I can tell that every person that spoke during that time, I mean, really prayed into it. Um, was you know trying to hear from the Lord for this generation, and so um, I I think the students and I was left encouraged, um, and then also like convicted a little bit of just um, the devotion, like being really devoted. I think that's really the word I left with was being devoted mm. um, to the Lord and mm -hmm. um yeah <laughs> just yeah. just making that just essential and so and then practically like what does that actually mean and so like being in your word daily right, things like right. that um being in uh, <laughs> yeah like just and it, you know you get it there's different ways, you know, we get it in. Like for a person like me, I'm in my car a lot. And so mm -hmm. I found that it's really, I, you know, it's easy for me to listen to the Bible because I don't always have the time to just sit and read right. a lot. But right. I love listening. Um, but yeah, just finding ways to get it in and then praying. Like, I think that's another thing too. And in, in this new year, I want to grow more in my prayer life. Um, oh. <laughs> so growing that muscle. Um, but yeah, I mean, the, the speakers were there. They were there to challenge. I could definitely tell like they, they wanted to challenge the students. Right. Um, just, just go beyond themselves, um, get uncomfortable. And the last speaker of that, time I mean he's like this is not just about you it's not just about us but it's about the generations coming after us right. um like your children and their children's children um and so you have an opportunity to change family right. lines uh, so yeah I think that's extremely beautiful Sarah um you know that you found a passion you know um like you said, for um, youth, uh, young adult ministry, campus ministry, sorry. Um, I love how you had mentioned um, not just encouragement, but conviction. You yeah. know, those two things um, 
give me one second. I'm, I'm just gonna check my battery life. It says that it's dying, but I swear I charged this darn laptop. So give me one second. <laughs> if it's anything like mine, mine will like, if it's not on the charger, it'll die so quick. <laughs> yeah, mine's on 20%. So I'm gonna okay. get my charger while I'm still talking to you. I don't know why mine's on 20%. 20%. But um, yes, being convicted and being encouraged two amazing things you know separate but together those two are some powerful combos powerful duo yeah i think we like conviction is good um because you know it puts us back i feel like it puts us back on okay what is god actually like trying to say what does he actually want me to do because when we come into you know talking to god talking to jesus everyone is coming with their own you know their own things their own agendas our own feelings there are things that you know sarah campbell wants to do and things that sarah campbell feels strongly about but at the end of the day i have chosen with my life to submit under the authority of jesus and so um yeah, I know there are things that I think or feel that don't right. align with what Jesus has said. And, so, right, <laughs> and, right. and, and I have to be reminded about mm-hmm. that. Um, and so even like, if I don't like it, it's like, it doesn't matter. I've chosen with my life to submit it to God and he will help me get me there. But yeah, um, yeah it's, it's so good. But then just even in that, God reminds me just, how just how good of a god he really is because yeah if i if i had to be god i think i would be a terrible god because i'm not oh same oh i'd be horrible i would have been ooh, there are a couple, <laughs> yep there are a couple people i would be a terrible just... god and so <laughs> uh yeah like he's so he's just so so good and so patient and yes, just yeah. even even in the correction like still so gentle and yeah. um yeah, so yeah, that's the thing about when it comes to like correction of, you know, God and stuff like that and the rebuke and stuff like that. His his correction and rebuke, it's not necessarily like humans, you know, it's not insecure, it's not unsure. You know, sometimes a rebuke or a correction can look like such a graceful hug he just comes to you skipping down the forest with lilies and it's peaches and butterfly you know it's not you know um i think that that's beautiful because when i first um met jesus when i um took my life at 15 you know that's how he would um that was our relationship you know what i mean it was it was more than just like honeymoon phase like no like he knew how to approach my heart he knew that i'm not the type of person that's going to take any i'm not going to respond well to any um, male assertiveness unless it's like a police officer or but like i feel like other than that i'm just not going to take or receive well you know, um, uh, a male speaking to me with a, 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 God, like a a wrathful, a stern voice. You know what I mean? That wasn't- Like harshness. Right, right. So it's like, he knew how to approach me. He knew that he could sugarcoat and I would still get it. (laughs) I was like, you could sugarcoat, I will get it. I will. Yeah. Yeah. So I think that's beautiful. I- like so yeah I wanted to talk about is some of that like I think the underlying oh wait 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 I want you to say it um specific and verbatim for um those of us who are just now tuning in so uh Sarah what are we going to be talking about today um today we will be discussing just the unconditional everlasting powerful love of God and just how ultimately there there's nothing there's nothing that you could do to make God not love you right <laughs> that's, love you. 
That's so true. That's so true. Um, something that you had mentioned, um, oops, sorry, I dropped my pen. Uh, something that you had mentioned, um, nothing can make him not love you. You know, um, I've done a lot of research on the history of the Bible, um, hmm. but that's a whole other, uh, that could be a whole other yeah, for sure. <laughs> episode, but like, you know, I'm studying, you know, the books that were taken out of the Bible 200 years ago, like the book of Adam and Eve, the book of Enoch, you know, and it just, it really paints a picture of like, there's literally nothing that can make God stop loving us. I mean, he yeah. loved and loves Lucifer. He just hates what he's done. But like, we forget that, you know, Lucifer was once his bestie. He was once this beautiful, kind being, uh, being full of love. He used to be. And, you know, notice God did not kill him. And um, it took, God was very patient with him. Lucifer chose to get kicked out of heaven. God didn't uh, kick him out until Lucifer made his ultimate huge choice. I just look at myself and I look at people like, you know, Hitler, um, these people that have done awful things. And a lot of times in my eyes, I think I'm an awful person, you know, um, and I'm just like, yes, there's the cross, but like, even before then, if God can love Lucifer, oh, he can love me, <laughs> you know? And, and one other thing that, you know, and I want to hear your thoughts on this. And also I want to hear your story and why you chose this uh, topic to talk about. Yeah. Um, something um, that Holy Spirit helped me to learn <clears throat> over the past couple months is, you know, we are not deserving of things. We were never meant to be deserving. We are worth. Worth is given freely. Deserving means earned. Um, so God's love, even before and after the fall, we were already loved just because we were his, you know? It was just like, it didn't take a fall for him to love us more. Like, we are so loved. Worth is freely given. And that's, I've been trying to change uh, my uh, vocabulary, Sarah, yeah. of when I say, you know, oh, I deserve better. Like, you know how, like, if, you know, we we learn and grow from, you know, quote unquote friendships, you know, um, you know, not the healthiest people um, around us. And, you know, I found myself a lot over the years saying, I deserve better. I deserve better. And so recently I started changing my vocabulary and saying, I am worth you know, I'm not deserving. I am worth. That triumphs that. Deser worth is above deserving. So worth is that you can screw up all the time, all the time. And it's just like worth isn't going to change, you know. Um, so, yes. Sarah, what are your thoughts on that? And also, why uh, did you specifically get geared and wanted to choose this topic? I don't know if I already asked you. Did I already ask you? No, no, no. Yeah, yeah. We okay. can, you know, yeah, we can talk about it. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah I'm just so, some of the things yeah, that you were saying, um, yeah, like worth, worthiness. Um, I know that's something a lot of people struggle with. Um, I struggle with <laughs> uh, definitely uh, like a lot before Christ. And then mm -hmm. um, even now it's a little bit sometimes. And again, I think the underlying thing of that is shame, uh, which is something God and Jesus does not operate in. Um, right. Is never the, the devil comes to bring shame and condemnation yeah. um, that never comes from Christ. And so, um, yeah. The difference between being am, I, I'm worthy and then this is something I deserve. I think ultimately, you know, if you are a follower of Christ, no one has earned anything. <laughs> you have not earned. I did not earn my salvation. I did not earn the good things in my life. Um, 
I was bought with the price. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. That price paid for me. And right. it, it is all, it's his, it's his worthiness. Um, it is, it's all through him that makes us worthy. Um, right. And so the good news about that is it's not about me. It's not anything that I did. It's not anything that you did. It's all on Jesus. Mm -hmm. And um, if, you know, that should be a relief, hopefully, when people hear that, because, yeah, it's not about how good you are of a person or even how bad you are as a person, mm -hmm. because under Jesus, everyone is at the same level. Right. Um, just like as you're saying, um, people throughout history, like, you know, Hitler and, you know, it's like, yeah, every person has an opportunity um, to accept Christ um, and to be redeemed and to come under that, that worthiness. And so, right. um, yeah, it's not about, you know, how many good deeds you did or good works or things that you didn't do. Um, mm -hmm. but that is the equal, the equalness that we all come under with Jesus. So, right. yeah. Um, but how I got, um, on this topic of God's just God's love in general and why it's been on my heart lately. Um, I, you know, just with my work, I'm, I'm on the college campus every day. Specifically. What, uh, what campus are you on? Rice University. Rice University. Oh. Yes, Rice University. Go out. So, <laughs> so yeah, so I, I work on that. I don't work for the, I'm not hired through the university, but right. um, I'm considered like the an official minister, campus minister. Um, and, and I'm also um, a duck and college associate there. And so. Um, what does that mean? I, a duck? <laughs> It Duncan College is oh, one of the man. yeah it's one of the residential colleges at Rice University and so um, it's it's where it's, it's a dorm basically where students live and so uh, okay. I can have access to go hang out with them but um, yeah so being on campus and being around college students um, I get to talk to students uh, uh, every day about these questions and we do this thing called the God Test which is a ten question survey. Um, about God, not Jesus, but just about God, because we we want to know what Jesus, um, we, we want to know what students think about Jesus and God. So, um, you know, I'm finding that the things that these, you know, this generation is dealing with, um, I think people really don't, well, one, they don't really know, like, who God is, um, they don't know who Jesus is. And then unfortunately, um, like Christianity and the U.S. Mm -hmm. always come across yep. super mm -hmm. appealing. And, right. you know, there's like all these things that me um, are not right. And, um, exactly. you know, and so I feel like the right message isn't always getting across, but um, it's the it's the box it's the it's the putting God in the box that gets on my nerves. It's the westernized Christianity. It's the yeah. surface level cliche, you know. Um, it's it's I'm literally this is something that I'm passionate about, and I talked about this on a, a podcast that I recorded earlier today as well, you know. Um, and my special guest, Logan, okay, he was he was talking about, you know, um, uh, how folks, you know, get hurt by the church and, you know, um, mental health and suicide. And, you know, we oftentimes hear a lot of church folks say, oh, it's because you don't have faith or this or that, you know. So I told him, I was like, I hear that so much. And then I told him, I was like, for people listening who... Um, believe that they don't have faith because of they're going through something or they don't think that someone has faith because that person's going through something you know uh, job elijah moses jonah um were suicidal and it's in the bible and i mean and we don't talk about that type of stuff you know it, that stuff's not talked about in church but it's like there's so many people who are going to this uh, this uh, building that's supposed to be a hospital, you know what I mean? They just need 
they just need whatever, whoever, but it's not fair that we push that under the rug. I have a question. Do you have that, um, you said that 10 question quiz. Do you have that on you right now? Yeah, I do. Can you ask me it? I kind of want to partake in this. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> this will be. This, this is fun. By the way, uh, two things. Sarah has a podcast voice. Am I right or am I right? Um, also, she looks like a high schooler, so we love keeping youthful looks. Y'all can't see her, but I can. Yeah. Oh, I am. Uh, I well, yeah. Being at the conference this week, I got asked so many times, like, "What grade are you in?" And you know, "What are you studying?" It's like, well, I graduated college in 2019, and <laughs> I am 26 now. So, <laughs> what you do not look at, and you're not even wearing makeup. You're not even wearing makeup right now. I got a little. I could have concealer on, yeah, but I, yeah, I'm 26. Yeah. You look, um, it's giving 16 and a half, 17. <laughs> 18 at maximum, but that's a stretch. But like, I would be shocked, but I would be like, yeah. We love youthful I'll looks. Take, I'll take that. Yes. All right, yeah, I have the ki- I have the quiz right here. So we can go through it. Um, I'm about yeah. to be vulnerable and honest, y'all. Y'all know this. So the first question is, do you believe in God? Yes. Yeah. Is it just yes or no? So the first one is just yes or no, and then um, it'll get more. Okay. More visible. So um, I'll tell you some of the answers. But second question, how would you describe God? Um, So this, you can kind of just tell me how how you would describe God. Mm. Based off of who I met when I took my life. I'd say this being of so much love. And I mean that in the most non-cliche way possible. I can't explain what that was. It it seemed like it was more than love. It just seemed like love is the only thing, is the only, uh, is the closest thing our human language can comprehend, I think. Yeah, so love. Oh, good. Number three, what does God expect of us? So what do you believe God expects of you? Hmm. And I'm going to remember your answers because I like to go back at the end and... um, You said what? I'm going to... I'll remember your answers because I like to go back at the end and share um, how how I would answer these questions. Right. Yeah. So what do you... Yeah. What do you believe God expects of us? Our heart, which is full of the good, the bad, the in-between. Our heart. So, um, if you had to rate yourself on a scale of 1 to 10, with 10 being perfection, 1 being not at all, how do you feel you are meeting that expectation? Zero. (laughs) Wait, you said said 1 to 10? So, yeah. So, 10 is, like, perfect. Uh-huh. And then one is like not at all. Where would you oh, okay. put on the scale? Okay, one. Okay, it's very honest. <laughs> <laughs> all right, switching gears a little bit. Um, question five: Does only one religion provide the true path to God? I'm sorry. Repeat that again. Uh, this is question five. So it's asking. Does only one religion provide the true path to God? Um, mm. There's yes, no, and uncertain. Those are the options. I want to say no, because I don't think it's religion that gets us anywhere. I think it's relationship. So I want to say no. Okay. Okay. Six, do you believe in heaven? There's yes, no. There's an option for like reincarnation and then there's uncertain. Oh my God, trust me, heaven is real, y'all. I've, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's real, it's so beautiful. So yes. Okay, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, number seven, 
does everyone go? No. And do you believe you will go to heaven? Yes. And why is that? Well, because G Jesus has my heart and because I physically met him. Um, he's in he's in my heart. I have relationship with him. Yeah. Even though I can't stand him a lot of the times. But um, he has my heart. <laughs> okay, yeah. Cool. Yep, yeah, God saved me. Yeah. And then um, the last question is like, would you want to know more about it or um, I, we go through it, but that was, that was actually really good. That was a, I mean, it's always really good, but there's, there's no right. There's no like pass or fail. It's just like, <laughs> <laughs> Oh, really quick. Um, I do want people to know. So Sarah, yours is episode 13 and that means there's about two more episodes until the season finale, or is it one more episode? Um, yeah, two more. Folks, I want y'all to know the season finale will be called What I Saw When I Committed Suicide at 15. So be looking for that. Sorry, Sarah. I just thought that it was relevant to this uh, yeah. situation. Yeah. No, I'm glad that you're um, sharing that experience and talking about it because mm. it's definitely a lot of, you know, people go through that um mm -hmm. it experienced feelings of that and don't always know like what to do when that happens right. um, and that's why i we need to create space for people to mm -hmm. share and be comfortable um but yeah um i liked with the beginning of the survey you said like you would describe god as loving and mm -hmm. Yeah, I 100% agree. Like, <laughs> I 100% agree. Um, I think if I was answering this for myself, um, we have like little options on here. So like one of the options is loving. Um, the second one is holy. And I think if I had to choose between the two, I would pick holiness because to be holy means to be set apart. It mm -hmm. means you are not like the rest. Right. You are not, you are you are other, and God has othered Himself. He <laughs> He is not like us. Um, and so I give students when I describe God's holiness, the picture that I describe to students is think of fire. Mm -hmm. Fire, like I, I I ask them, hey, what is something really good that fire does for us? They're like, well, it gives us light. Um, it can help us cook. You know, it provides warmth. And I'm like, yes, those are all like really good things. And I said, what are maybe some not so great things that fire does? And they're like, well, it can burn you. <laughs> mm -hmm. If you touch it, uh, if it gets out of control, it can start it can, you know, wildfire. Um, you know, it can really destroy. Um, and so that that is what God's holiness and the bible describes it like that it says that he's an all-consuming fire mm -hmm. um and so the way that i describe just even how like god and us work and the separation that we have with him what sin does is separates us from god the word sin means to miss the mark, miss the mark. Uh -huh. everyone has missed so we have that's you know we have we have missed the mark yeah. in some way oh um, yeah i missed the mark today yeah yeah <laughs> twice y'all know y'all know i'm trying to stop watching pornography and doing webcam i missed the mark twice today and like twice yesterday yes being vulnerable yeah continue no yeah, yeah so yeah to miss the mark and so um yeah there's a verse that says all have fallen short of the glory of God, every single person. And so we have all missed the mark in some way. And so what sin does, if God is an all-consuming fire, his holiness, it can't, like sin cannot exist 
near him and him it just can't it'll completely it'll just get it obliterated and that's why if you read any old testament like the prophets when they would go and do sacrifices um if they like forgot something within like the ritual or something and they walked into the temple to do a sacrifice to god they could drop dead if, <laughs> if something was off um and that's not god like being mean, you know, we read that in stories and we're like, what the heck? Like, that's so, you know, right, right. but that, that is his, that's just his nature. It is the nature of who he is. It's he, he think of something so pure in yeah. its light in its goodness that just mm -hmm. nothing, nothing outside of that yeah, it feels can crazy. exist. And so yeah. um, even when I'm talking to students about like health, and what that is like, because people are like, well, do you believe it's like this burning place? I'm like, well, think of it this way. If God is like everything good that we love and, you know, people try to say like, well, earth is our hell. I'm like, it's not completely. I mean, there's still, you know, here on here on earth, we experience the good and the bad, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. because as God says, we have heaven here on earth he says for us to pray for heaven here on earth and mm -hmm. so we have some some of that goodness pushing back the bad um but hell is a place where it's just all bad mm -hmm. and so i'm like you know separation from god is going to a place where all of those good things do not exist mm -hmm. and that is that is hell that is not where i want to be and mm -hmm. so does not sound fun to me at all Sometimes uh, I look at my childhood and I'm like, are you sure that wasn't hell? Because <laughs> it seems like it was, it seems like it was, but I'm, that's just me. There's no, yeah, me. no. So and that's, and yeah, and, um, and that's what, cause because we live on a, in a fallen world, yeah. we experience awful things. But the right. fact is good things can still happen and do still happen on earth. And so- yes. Yeah, hell is a place where nothing good ever happens, ever. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, so just getting off of that second question, that is how I answer that um, with God's holiness is that all-consuming fire. And so yeah. number yeah. three, what does God expect of us? Um, I would say ultimately God expects for us to believe in him um, mm -hmm. and to follow him. Jesus says, you know, he that's what he told his disciples. Okay, follow me. <laughs> Like that, follow me and have belief. Believe in me, follow me, obey my words. Um, yeah, yeah. And yeah. so the expectation of that, my if I had to rate myself, yeah, I, I commend you for your honesty. You're like, well, I'm a one. And so, yeah. <laughs> and so even, you know, like I'll probably put myself as at like, you know, of five, six, but even still, it's like the whole point of the scale is to show people that you are not a 10, like you'll, you'll right. never be a 10. Like right. <laughs> you're not perfect. Right. Uh, you, yeah, and that's okay. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. And that, that is the point. The point is yeah. you, you will, can, you will fall in some way because you are not God. Um, but thankfully there is a man who, who is God who came to us. Um, and fulfilled the work for us. Um, and so going into question five is switch gears. So this question, I know it can kind of throw people off a bit just how how a person is interpreting it. Um, so it's saying, does only one religion provide the true path to God? And you explained, well, I don't think religion is what gets us there. I think it's relationship. And mm -hmm. I, I would agree with that. Like it, it, it's a relationship is what is required and is right. what is what is desired by God right. is to have a relationship. Um, I will make an exclusive well, stick. Really of, quick, you know, um, you know, can you explain a little bit the difference between religion and relationship for yeah. um, those of us who don't know? <laughs> Yeah. So, you know, religion is just, you know, I'm checking off all the things. I yeah, gotta get all the rules. I gotta get all the rules out. Gotta, you know, I'm checking off the box. Um, but you know, it's like, well, how do you how do you treat people 
that right. you don't know, you know, are you, you know, how do you treat your family? You know, do you, you know, do you, like actually talk to God? Are you willing to like change your plans if he tells you, you know? <laughs> right. Yeah. It kind of reminds me of, you know, deserving and then worth because it's like with religion, there's that, oh, got to check off all the boxes, you know, got to, okay, yeah. I went to church, I dressed up, okay, you know, um, I tithed, um, I always struggle to say that word, tithed. I, okay. Yeah, yeah and, it's... and then, like, relationship with God is, like, whether you get it right or get it wrong, you're mine, and... You're not excluded from me. I want all of you. I want your mistakes. I want your good days. I want your bad days. I want yeah. your ugly days. I want those moments where you are purposely, you know, screwing up. I want those moments when you're just trying your best. Yeah. I want it all. And so that's why I'm like, yeah. I choose relationship over religion because I can never get it together. I can't, I, I don't deserve or nor can I earn it but worth is like worth is where relationship is because yeah. love is not supposed to be conditional if it's conditional then it's not really love to its full yeah. potential so relationship yeah. is that love and that word yeah and um, yeah I'll share to you some of my experience with this um, particular thing with religion yeah versus relationship because I really met the Lord when I was at college. I went to the University of North Texas in Denton. Oh my God, I was about to go there one time. Oh, really? It's a good school. I, I loved it there. Yeah. But um, I grew up in church. So for y'all listening, I'm a church girl. Like I grew up going to church since I was an infant and <laughs> serving in the church. Um, I'm a singer and musician. And so doing worship and um, doing all that. I, I did it all growing up. And so okay, when I me. went, when I went to university, um, I remember what I was feeling when I graduated high school and then I went straight off to college. I, it just, something fell off. Something fell off with my relationship with God. And, um, I remember also just feeling really jealous of other people, like other Christians who felt just so on fire for the Lord. And mm -hmm. they just looked so sure and confident where they mm -hmm. were. And I was like, I want that, but I don't know how to get that. Mm -hmm. And I also felt a lot of shame for just how I lived my life when I was in high school. I felt like I was very like one foot in and one foot out, like in the church and in the world, I like didn't really know um, like where I stood and what my values were. Like I knew right from wrong, but um, I was not very consistent in like following Jesus. Although I loved church growing up, I, ha I had a good, great heart um, for wanting to always be in church, but just never really felt sure of where I was in my relationship with God. And basically like how do, I was like, how do you stop sitting? I'm like, how do you just stop this? It's just this, mm -hmm. like, an impossible thing. And I just, I felt so defeated all the time. So mm -hmm. fast forward, this is my first semester at college. So I'm walking, no, I'm having lunch with my roommate and a guy who was a volunteer with Every Nation, the ministry that I work for now, he was on campus. Mm -hmm. Don't know this man, a complete stranger. He walks up to me and says... God is calling you to be in our ministry. Complete stranger. Now, I actually grew up going to every to an Every Nation church, the Every Nation church here in Houston. Um, okay. But this man, he didn't know that about me when when he met me. Mm. He literally got he got a word from the Holy Spirit and yeah. was obedient to it and told me that God was calling me to be in his ministry that they were starting at UNT. Mm. And so I remember looking up at him and I was like, well, I don't know if that's right, but <laughs> sure, like I'll join a small group or whatever. So I ended up joining a small group and then I was invited to attend a student retreat with them. And it yeah. was at that retreat that I received the baptism of the Holy Spirit. 
And that changed everything for me. Yeah. And I do think that is very, very key with coming to Christ. And I know there's, you know, different denominations within Christianity, but the Holy Spirit, you know, I don't put one over the other in the Trinity, but before I met the Holy Spirit, I was like, I was a, I was a powerless Christian essentially. And so mm, yeah. it was with that. Cause I, it, it was the last sermon of the retreat and I was so pissed that I was there and the speaker, he could just kept saying, the Holy Spirit can give you power to overcome sin. He mm -hmm. can help you follow Jesus. And he's the whole reason, the whole, he's here on earth. Jesus left. Jesus and God are in heaven chilling. <laughs> the Holy Spirit is here on earth with us. And after here, I was literally shaking in my chair because I was like, you know, I think, I think God is trying to tell me something. I think this is it. This is my moment. This is what I was, I've been waiting for. And I had to find the courage to get up out of my seat and walk to the front because they were praying for people and laying hands. And I was like, okay, I think this is it. So I got up, went to the front. Um, there were some women up there and mm -hmm. they, they laid hands for, on me and they prayed for me. And then all of a sudden I felt this wellness just swelling mm. in my in my body and it just came out and I prayed I spoke in tongues <laughs> like, yeah. that just, just happened automatically um and I was yeah. like whoa this is so cool yeah. <laughs> um, so I mean it was a real supernatural moment for me I mean right. people even say like my just even my my appearance they're like you just look brighter oh, and yeah. it's more yeah. full life and I I believed it because when I first went to that retreat, when I arrived, I was just just <laughs> mad at the world and just <laughs> gloomy. And then after receiving the Holy Spirit, I mean, that's what God does. He comes to bring us joy and love and fulfillment. Yeah. And so yeah. Jesus said, it's more, it's more than religion. And this is a good story right. for this is in John chapter three when Jesus is talking to Nicodemus, who is a, he's a priest, a Jewish priest, and he knows all the rules. Oh, he was? Oh. He knows all the rules. Yeah, he's a part of the, he's he's a Pharisee or Sadducee, but he's one of the priests. And so oh. he knew all the rules. And Jesus was talking to him and like trying to explain to him, like, he's like, dude, you need to be born again. And Nicodemus is not getting it. He's like, what do you mean? Like, I got to go back into my mom's mm. stomach and right. like, oh, yeah, yeah, I remember that. Like, what do you, and Jesus is like, no, that's mm -hmm. not like, mm -hmm. he's like, no, dude, you got to be born again of the spirit. And yeah. this is what he was talking about. And that, so that is what happened to me. I got born again, fresh mm -hmm. out of the spirit of the Holy Spirit. And then I got baptized again in water. But mm -hmm. um, yeah, it, after that moment, it's not, it's like, okay, now I can do this. Yeah. Now I, I can say, I can say no to sin. Yeah. I have the power. It's, it's, it's in me. Like I, I felt that. And there were some things that I was doing that immediately fell off. Yes, I that is, yep. Mm -hmm. That I no longer had interest in. And then there are things that you work, you work out, like you work through them, through mm -hmm. the process of being sanctified. You can, you know, continue to walk with Jesus and be sanctified through him. Um, mm. It's not that it's not that I don't sin anymore. Of course I do. Um, but I, I can tell you, I sin a lot less. <laughs> right, right. That's a, you know, that's a good way to put it. That's a good way to put it. That is a great way to put it. <laughs> I, I sin a lot less than I used to. That's for sure. Mm. Um, and yeah, it's, it's just, you know, God is working. So now what, when I do feel tempted, it's like, okay, I can say no to this. I can choose to say, and that's what um, Jesus says. Okay, how do you, how do I resist, resist the devil? Well, first he says, what is it? Resist, sub, what is it? The order is submit. Submit and he'll flee. Resist the devil. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And flee. So, um, yeah. So, but 
in all of that, um, that was me coming into the beginning of my relationship with the Lord and yeah. how I got to where I am now is because all that head knowledge that I had from growing up in church and serving, although it was good mm-hmm. stuff because it gave me a foundation for where I am right now. And mm-hmm. I, cause I, 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 I love the Bible. I know a lot about the Bible, but mm-hmm. I not, it didn't really click in me until that moment at college and it's like, okay, I understand this now. God loves me. Like he's madly in love with me yeah. and all always wanted me. He always wanted me. I, it's like, I, I had convinced myself that I wasn't good enough for him. And that's what I thought. I was like, yeah. I was like, God does not want me. But even if he does, I wouldn't want him to want me because I'm just an awful person. That's that's what I thought about myself. Right. But I was so wrong. God, he wants you. He yeah. wants you so bad that he he literally died. And so for anyone that um, has not fully heard what the gospel is, I just wanted to read it here. Um, our my ministry has come up with the statement mm-hmm. of what the gospel is. And so I just wanted to read it. It says, yeah. the gospel is the good news that God became man in Jesus Christ. He lived the life we should have lived and died the death we should have died in our place. Three days later, he rose from the dead, proving that he is the son of God and offering the gift of salvation and forgiveness of sins to everyone who repents and believes in him. Mm. And so that's why that is the that is the expectation is to believe him. Believe him. Believe his words. Um yeah, and follow him. But he's he is waiting. And that and that's that changed my life. And so that's why I'm so passionate about campus ministry because it was that moment is why I'm doing the work that I'm doing now. Mm. And because just even out of this week, some of the, the stories and the testimonies that come out of our students, mm. they're like, well, I used to be a loner and now I have a family. And, mm. you know, so one of our girls, she's like, well, I didn't know who I was, but now I know that I'm a daughter of God. Mm-hmm. Like, I know, I know that about me, like yeah. her identity. Um, so, you know- yeah. So there's something I also wanted to add on to that. One, I'm loving, every time you talk, you're just smiling and glowing and gleaming. And I just love to see it. I'm, I'm, it's inspiring. But um, two, if anyone has told, whoever is listening, if anyone has told you that God does not love you because this, this, and that, uh, I physically met Jesus, okay? He came and hugged this gay atheist person at the age of 15. Trust me, he loves hard. It don't matter. It don't matter. Yeah. And, you know, uh, that episode, you know, there's more to the story of what I saw when I committed suicide. It's going to be the title of the season finale. You know, whether you um, believe in God or not, or if you're just kind of like thinking about it, you know, everyone is welcome to that episode. Everyone is welcome to any episode on this podcast. Um, But specifically that episode, anyone is welcome because it's like you can still get something out of it, you know, regardless of, you know, just because I don't want to give out too much, but there's just a lot more um, that happened. It's going to, yeah, what I saw when I committed suicide at the age of 15. I think I'm going to add the age of 15 there. But I just wanted to, I just thought it was appropriate um, because Sarah was mentioning, you know, how he loves and he does. It's not just some cliche thing that people say and then they don't really mean it. Because a lot of the actions and the judgment don't say that. Um, He loves when right. there's nothing that can stop you, trust me. Yeah, yeah. Um, it yes. says in, in the Bible, there's there's nothing that can separate us 
for no love for Christ. No, no, no demons, no, power, no angels. Nothing in heaven or hell on earth. There's there's literally nothing. Um, and so I, 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 I want people to start there because um, I know everyone is on their own journey yes. of self-discovery and faith and um, coming to terms. Um, but I believe, I just want people to know the mm-hmm. door is open for you um, to not, don't disqualify yourself. Right. Um, if this is something that you want, that you desire. The word says it is those who, who are seeking, if you are, this is something you are seeking from God, you will be fulfilled mm-hmm. by him. Um, and so don't, don't disqualify yourself. Please don't, please don't. If you, if you need to reach out to me, I would love to talk to you. Um, yeah, her uh, Instagram will be in the episode description below. Yeah, that there's just, there's so much goodness that is waiting, waiting for you. And mm-hmm. that is, that is something um, also that weighs heavy on my heart. I, I think I could think back of Genesis and going back to the garden and the first words that God used to describe, describe his creation was just, he was like, this is good. He was like, you know, disappear the, the pureness of it. He's like, this is, this is good. Like, this is good and all good. And I, I'm like, yeah, it's a, it's a simple, small thing, but I'm like, he is good guys. God is good. Yeah. And he has goodness waiting for you. Um, he does, he does. And so don't, 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 don't disqualify yourself. Um, it doesn't matter about what you did in the past, what, what you're currently doing, what or what you're even planning to do. <laughs> right. Right. Um, right. It's it. It's not too late. Yeah, you come as you are, where you are. Right. You ain't, ain't got to get perfect and yeah. more. Don't have to, don't. And that was my problem. I thought I had to fix it up yeah. before. You do not. Now the thing that I love about Jesus is he comes and meets us where you are, but he does not leave us there. He does not leave you where you are. He comes to you. Yeah. He will meet you, but it's he does not leave you there. And I'm glad he doesn't because he would have just, I would have still been left just dead in my sin, but he, he didn't leave me there. He he comes to redeem um, and to change and make make us whole. Not make us better, but it, it is a mm. full, it's a, it's a full a rebirth. good way to put it. I like that. Not make yeah. us better, but make us whole. There's a difference. Yeah. It's a Sarah, re- <laughs> I would like, if you don't mind, could you pray us out? You know, yeah. Someone listening might need a prayer. I know I do. I know I learned a little bit and needed to hear a lot of the stuff that you were saying. I needed yeah. to hear it. I needed the reminder. Yeah. So would you, would you please? I would love to. Okay. Um. Don't bow your head if you're driving. You don't even have to bow your head. I never bow my head when I pray. Yeah, keep your eyes open. Like sometimes I pray with my eyes, uh, my eyes open a lot. That's so funny. Uh, yeah. Uh, Heavenly Father, God, we thank you for who you are. Um, Lord, I thank you that you sent your son, Jesus, for us. Um, that you did not just leave us on this earth without a solution, that you had a plan so that we could all have relationship with you. Um, I thank you, God, that relationship is something that you desire. Mm -hmm. Um, You you want to be with us, you want to know us. Um, And I thank you, God, that you you made that a a way, you made it possible. Um, When Jesus died, it says the curtain was torn into meeting that every person could now enter in. And that's what you say, God, you say to come in. Um, so for anyone that's listening, God, who who doesn't know you, um, who's never met you before, doesn't know anything about you, um, God, for that person, I just thank you for them. I thank you for their mm-hmm. life. I thank you that they're listening now. Um, God, and I just believe that you will begin uh, just so working in them, uh, that you would even send people their way, 
um, to remind them of you and that of, of your love for them. Um, and that you have not left us alone. You haven't left us alone, God. When you left earth, you sent the Holy Spirit to be with us and to help us. He guides us into all truth. Um, and so, God, I thank you. I just thank you for the love that you have for humanity. Um, yes. That there is so much hope. And I, I witnessed it this week, the hope that you have for humanity, for, for this generation. It is not a lost cause. Um, mm. The Lord, you, you want to change the world. Um, you want to change our hearts. Yeah. So we thank you, God, for this time. And yeah. we praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you so much, Sarah, for <laughs> your episode your episode thank you so much for your vulnerability sharing your hope with us in your story thank you so much thank you we thank Appreciate you it. so much thank you for thank being you. alive with that being said folks if no one has told you today that they love you please allow yourself to be the first and allow me to be the second I love you and I life you. I'm proud of you for being on this earth. Out of all those days that tried to take you out, you are still here. You know what that means? That means you won. Winning is not always a feeling. You won, folks, whether you feel it or not. You won. You win. You yeah. win. Oh, I want to also yes. one thing. There is a really good... TV show that you should check out. It's it totally free. It's called The Chosen. Oh, I have you? Say. Okay. Yeah. Really great show. I I I love it. I think Are you it's about so the new season. Yeah. Well, the new season has been. I mean, all of it is like straight fire. Yeah. But like, yeah, I think it's such. It they do so, such a good job of being like, hey, like this is probably like what it was like and. <laughs> what Jesus was doing and oh man it's just it's so good like the context and everything it makes me like after watching the show it makes me want to go back to my bible and like read it because it's just it makes it come alive yeah. it's so cool yeah it's beautiful so, y'all should go just check it out just just google the chosen and you you can find out how to watch it it's on an app um but the first season is on Netflix so that is true Want to go watch season one? Just you have a Netflix account, go watch it. Yes, yes. Or if you're like me and you use someone else's Netflix accounts, go watch it. Go We're watch thinking it. Thinking smarter, not harder. We're thinking um, yes. less expensive. Every here. it is a free show, so you don't have to have Netflix if you don't. But yeah, right. it's use someone else's account. Got to do what you got to do. <laughs> um, thanks so much, Sarah. Thank you. Um. With that being said, folks, I will see y'all next week. Um, let's see. We'll be, it'll be a special guest host, everyone. Not uh, not a co-host, a special guest host. So I will not be in the episode. It'll be Dr. Tabari. And it'll be Julia from last season. Remember Julia? They're going to be talking about psychology, self-love, self-esteem, and the relationship with mental health and much more the episode is fire um so make sure i'll go watch it and once again thank you so much sarah thank you stay on stay on hey there if you liked this episode go ahead and buy my book on amazon what the book is called type it on amazon it is spoken by trenton epizon Epizon is spelled E-P-I-Z-O-N. I really would appreciate the support. Give it a review. Give it a buy. Give it a try. And I promise you, you will not be upset at it. It is a poetry book. It is a very easy, quick read. And it definitely um, will give you some healing and some insight and some wisdom um, on abuse, mental health, recovery, um, the tragedy to triumph. 
You will love it. Give it a buy. Give it a try and recommend the book and this episode with others. Go ahead and give this episode, I mean, this podcast a follow and share it with others. You could be the reason that someone is alive tomorrow because you decided to share this episode today. This podcast is about saving lives, healing ourselves and others, and encouraging others and ourselves as well. Thank y'all so much for the support. Love y'all. I life y'all. I will see y'all next episode. You are valuable. You are beautiful. You are still on this earth because you have the strength. Thank you. Bye, folks.